We previously derived the torsion equation for a circular shaft where we found that the shear stress is tangent to the boundary, which should be a stress-free surface. So if we translated this solution to a non-circular shaft subjected to torsion, well as we can see, the stress vector being perpendicular to the radial vector, as with the case of the circular section, violates the condition of a stress-free surface. So we can see that when we resolve the stress into horizontal and vertical components, and we get a complementary shear stress acting on a free surface. So recall the displacements we derived in Cartesian coordinates for the circular shaft. So here we had our fiber AB rotating to fiber AB dash from which we obtained the displacements U and V. So guided by the solution for a circular shaft, Saint Venant extended the theory with a warping function. So the idea is that the section warps or develops a displacement in and out of the z-direction which is produced by a warping moment. So this would relieve the stress on the free surface where it would again be zero. And this warping displacement in the z-direction denoted W, depends on the rate of twist, and that's multiplied by some warping function, which we denote psi, which depends on x and y. So from the displacements, we can obtain the strains. So noting that this is an element that we cut out from the shaft to expose the internal stresses, we have the strain acting on the face with the normal pointing in the x direction which is denoted by the first subscript and the second subscript denotes the direction of the strain. So that's equal to the partial derivative of the horizontal displacement with respect to x. So as we can see u does not depend on x so that's zero and similarly the axial strain in the y direction is the partial derivative of the vertical displacement with respect to y. So v does not depend on y, so that's also zero. And the strain in the z direction is the partial derivative of w being the warping displacement with respect to z. So the rate of twist and the warping function do not depend on z, so that's also zero. And now we'll obtain the shear strains first in the xy plane. So that's the partial derivative of the horizontal displacement with respect to y plus the partial derivative of the vertical displacement with respect to x. So you can see the pattern here from these two subscripts. So the partial derivative of u with respect to y is minus theta z and the partial derivative of the displacement v with respect to x is theta z. So as we can see, there's no shear strain in the xy plane. And now in the xz plane, we have the partial derivative of u with respect to z plus the partial derivative of w with respect to x. So as we can see, du dz is minus theta y and the w dx is plus theta by the partial derivative of the warping function with respect to x. So we can simplify this by factoring out the rate of twist and we have the psi dx minus y. And similarly, the shear strain in the yz plane is the partial derivative of v with respect to z plus the partial derivative of w with respect to y. 
So a db to z is theta x, and the w dy is theta, but a partial derivative of the warping function with respect to y. So factoring out the rate of twist, we have d psi dy plus x. And now using the constitutive relation between the stresses and the strains, we can obtain the stresses from the strains. So assuming that we're dealing with a homogeneous isotropic material, so typically we'll be dealing with steel beams. So therefore the stress is related to the strain by the Young's modulus. So again the stress on the face with the normal in the x direction acting in the x direction is zero. And similarly, the other axial stresses are also zero. And now the shear stress acting on the x face and pointing in the y direction is equal to the shear modulus by the shear strain. So in the xy plane, the shear stress is also zero. Now the shear stress in the xz plane is equal to the shear modulus by the shear strain in the xz plane, which is theta by the partial derivative of the warping function with respect to x minus y. And the shear stress yz is the shear modulus by the shear strain in the yz plane. So let's get rid of this zero shear stress xy. And these two here are the only non-zero stresses. So what we have is the shear stress on the x plane acting in the z direction and the shear stress on the y plane acting in the z direction being non-zero. So note that we'll have complementary shear stresses on the adjacent face. So for this stress here, we'll have a complementary shear stress on the z face in the x direction. And that'll be equal in magnitude to this shear stress. And similarly, we'll have a complementary shear stress acting on the z face in the vertical direction which is a complementary shear stress to tau yz. So from now on, we'll use these two shear stresses, which will be acting on the z phase, to better visualize the torsion problem for non-circular open sections.